have been very fortunate to have a great men of God work in my life. Thank you, Jesus. And Brother Garrison's been one of those men. Brother Bice has been serving us as a bishop for some time now. Been part of this work and this church building and what God's doing here. He has been great in our life. But before Brother Bice, it was Brother Garrison. Before Brother Garrison, it was Brother Rounds. I could go on and on. I have been fortunate. Uh, as a minister to have these men of God pour and pour in and take time for me and teach me and educate me uh, so that I could do what little I could do in the kingdom. And I say that jokingly because my goal is to do much in the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But Brother Garrison is here and I'm thankful that he is here. But there's a timing that God has and sometimes you just fall into it and other times it catches up with you. This meeting is not just another meeting. It's not just uh, a revival service. It's not just uh, us decide to throw a cool name on the board and maybe draw, draw a crowd. But God ordained this meeting. And uh, we know that because the enemy's fought it tooth and nail for the last week or two. But Brother Garrison has come down to be with us. And uh, we worked together for about five years. Uh, he may tell you more. I don't know. North Carolina as a pastor there, a minister there, and uh, he came into our life when I needed somebody who knew something about spiritual warfare. When you're sitting in a church house and witches walk up in and sit on the back row and start doing things and you don't know what in the world is this, and you young 27-year-old pastor don't know what in the world is this, and how do we deal with this? We go to prayer and try to handle it best we know how. And you start praying, Lord, I need somebody Jesus. to teach me how to handle this. And long, God connected us with Brother Garrison, so they came in. They have spent 25 years, I believe, 25 years in the fields of Nigeria as missionaries. And I believe they helped establish Bible schools. In fact, we later uh, went up to London to help Brother Ithala who came out of that work in Nigeria, moved to London and started a Nigerian church in London. And we were able to go up there two or three times and help them establish uh, a body that worked together and worshiped together and prayed together. So we've, we've, we've been encountering some interesting things. We've been on mountaintops together. We've been in the valleys really low together. <laughs> Amen. And when we needed him most, he was there. And so we're so thankful that he has been in our life and that he is here tonight. There's much more I could say, but he's probably going to tell you some of that. But tonight is not just, it's not just about Chanchula. It's not just about Rock River Church of Pentecost. It's about the kingdom of God. And wherever you are, ministering, working, or living, if you are in the kingdom of God, we have a job to do. We don't know how much time we have to do it. That's right. So, some folks just don't know him at all. That's right. I was joking today, there are people who just put everybody in heaven, everybody's going to heaven, everybody's going to heaven. And I knew some of these jokers. <laughs> They're going to heaven. I must be going to a super heaven. I'm just <laughs> but by the grace of God. But there is a heaven, and there's a God who holds the key there, and he's the one who's going to let us in. How do you work? You know, I'm not, I, I have a house and I have keys to my house. And somebody just wants to come knock on my door and say, Hey, can I come in and eat with you and wear your clothes and go through your cupboards and sleep in your bed? And I've never talked to you. I don't know who you are. Do you think I'm going to let you in my house? We're going to hang outside the house and get to know each other a little bit before I invite you in. There's a lot of folks that just want to put everybody in heaven. People going to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven. Anybody ever heard of hell? I'm sorry. Yeah. I said a word he heard. Yeah. Hell. There's a hell to shun. That's right. Yeah. Heaven again. Amen. Yeah. And you can't just barge into heaven and tell Jesus, you got to let me in. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. Amen. If I was him, I, we, we, we were him. Yeah. <laughs> but it's his house. He's going to say who gets to come in, and you're going to have to know him to be able to come in. 
Right. What is the point if we don't know Him? Right. Amen. <coughs> but that's what this is about. Right. God's going to educate us about what's going on in the kingdom. I'm going to minister to you tonight. The Lord kept me up late last night. I saw some of your faces. He gave me some information for you before the service is over. I'm going to do my best to relate to you what God said to me for you. And uh, it's funny because some of you are sitting exactly where I saw you in my spirit. Um, and some of you are a few rows back, so I don't know who got that off, me, God, or you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, praise God. Well, I'm not going to delay any longer. I'm going to go here. So come, take his liberty. Would you clap your hands and ask the Lord to bless you?
But I'm going to talk to you and bring you up to date with what I feel like I sense in the Spirit of God and what I know in the Spirit of God. I want to share this with you because you know what? Tomorrow is the last day of 2016. Yes, sir. That's right. It's, it's over. I mean, we... We'll come back here tomorrow night, and hopefully we're going to do the New Year prayer thing, and uh, the clock's going to strike 12, and 16's gone, and 17 arrives. You know what usually happens this time of year? You know, we're trying to recuperate and hang over overeating during Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then we're making the, in our mind that all kind of commitments that we're going to do better in 2017. That's all good. But I want to remind you that in this setting, he said, we're not going to do this this way anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next time we do this, it's going to be entirely different because it's not going to be here in this place. It's going to be in my Father's kingdom. Right. Well, he didn't take them to heaven and have communion with them. No. He had communion with them right here on earth. Yes. So the same kind of circumstances, same type of real estate with the same type of people. Right. So there was a visible transition that took place, but there was also a spiritual transition that takes place. Yes. So in my Father's kingdom, it is the spiritual kingdom. Right. Yeah. The information is spiritual information. Yeah. Right. The revelations are revelations by the Spirit. Right. The activity that goes on is spiritual activity. And for right. you to understand how this works, you're going to have to get out of the flesh and get into the Spirit right. and let the Spirit of God resonate with your spirit. Right. That's the real oneness of God. Yeah. 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 The Spirit of God, to get in my human spirit, right. human spirit goes down and God's exonerated oh. and exalted in my human spirit and we become one. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you love Him. Yeah. That's when you hear Him. That's when He speaks clear yeah. to you. And that's when you become very effective in the kingdom of God. Amen. We're not going to have church like we have had church because it's going to close. I'm telling you that tonight's service is the beginning of how it's going to be in 2017 for those who want to participate in it. Now, there's an option there. Yeah. If you don't like what I'm saying to you, if you don't, if you don't want to change the way we're going to drink the wine, and you don't want to go into my father's kingdom to drink wine, then it's your choice right. to go somewhere else or keep doing it just like you have been doing it. Right. Yeah, come on. I want to offer you some information tonight that's, that's in real time and it is real. But 90% of us don't even have a clue or pay attention of things that's going on around us. Come on, sir. I want you to be real quiet with me for about 10 seconds. And I want you to use your ears and listen as hard as you can. What did you hear? A little... Pretty fast the people there. <laughs> the noise of fans and buzzing from the... And we hear things that we see. But did, did anybody hear the grass growing inside? No. Did anybody hear the water flowing under the earth and all these channels where we get water and drink? No. The birds in the nest? The trees growing? All that stuff has been taking place all around us 24 hours a day, every day. That's right. But we don't pay attention to it, do we? Because for some reason, we're not focused on that. Right. We're more focused on what we see, whose face that is, whose person this is, whose name this is, what type of building this is, what are we doing here, this type of situation that we're in, worshiping. So this is the stuff that we just get caught up in. But there is... Another world going on and it's running concurrent with our world. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody seen Jesus Christ in here tonight? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all about Him. That's right. I mean, hey, the songs. No, you don't see Him. But can I get a witness of anybody that's felt His Amen. presence here tonight? Amen. 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 Understanding you have, and I know we're on different pages. And if I tried to to meet the needs of everybody here tonight, it'd, it'd take all night long because I have to do it one at a time. But you know what he does? He multitasks. He can fix everything in your yes. life. Yes. Everybody yes. in this room, yes. no matter how great it is or how small it is, he can do it all just with a snap of his finger. He does this by his spirit. He does this by the power of his kingdom. He does this because he's more than capable of doing this. 
The man of God has already announced to you tonight that God spoke to him. He actually saw you sitting on the pew that you're sitting on right now. God advanced him into the future enough to see you and speak to his mind saying that he wants to say these things to you and pray a prayer of faith for you that whatever your need is, it will be met. Yes, come on. How does that work? I don't know how that works. All I know is it works. <laughs> Summer a year ago, I was going to Lowe's to get a plumbing part. And I had been dragging for a number of weeks, just didn't have any energy, but I had a responsibility and I was trying to complete my project. So I walked into those, got way back in the back where the plumbing parts are, and I reached up to take a hold of the part that I was looking for, and my chest just lit on fire. I stood there and I thought, whoa, what in the world is this? And then I felt my body start to change, and I felt this thing, my heart beating, and I felt fire, and I thought, I'm in trouble here. And so I had no sense to know probably I was having a heart attack. So I said, I, I got to get back home where I can get some help. And so I turned and started walking out of Lowe's and we got about three aisles down and the thing hit me again and I leaned up against a row of things that were on the shelves and I'm trying to breathe and this thing is just getting heavier and hotter and I'm getting afraid because I know that I'm that close to leaving this world. Mm -hmm. And I rested for a minute and I said, i got to get out of here. i got to get home. And so I started toward the front again. And I got almost up to the cash register where the builders and the contractors go. And they had these uh, carts that you pile lumber and plow one on. And I got close to that and I actually fell over one of those lumber carts. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to breathe. And this thing is on fire and I'm scared out of my mind. And my phone went. And I picked it up, turned it on, and said hello. It was a preacher. Wayne Huntley. He was in an airport somewhere in the United States. And he said, Johnny? I said, Wayne, you got to pray for me. I'm going to have a heart attack. He said, give me a minute. We get out of this crowd. And he got somewhere. And he prayed. And when he prayed, the fire stopped. The energy came back. The fear left. I got through the checkout, into my car, drove home, took a shower, called my son-in-law. He came and took me to the emergency room, and then it started. And I ended up having five bypass surgery. And so after this thing occurred, I'm talking to Brother Huntley, my wife's cousin, about what took place. And he said, I didn't call you. He said, you called me. I said, I didn't call you. <laughs> and so, two and two makes four. I figured it out. Something I didn't see. Something I couldn't explain. Something I couldn't make happen. Happen because somewhere, something invisible, something running concurrent in my life, saw that it was not time for me to check out. He had something else for me to do until my appointment. There's a spiritual connection. And so if anybody could pray for me, my pastor's dead, it would be him because he loves me. God knew whose button to touch. Yeah. He knew yeah. the time. And he yeah. knew everything about it. And I'm alive today. I'm way past my three score and ten. I just had a birthday. I'm two years into the good now. So what does that mean to me? Every day that I wake up is a day that God has given to me. I don't know about you, but I'm not wasting it. I'm not looking around trying to find stuff to do. I'm saying to him, you gave me another day. I thank you that I'm breathing. But this is what I'm going to do with this day you gave me. I'm going to take it and give it back to you to use in your kingdom. I don't want your money. I don't want the things that life we all pursue. All I want to know is that I live my life today in the kingdom. And you know what? It changed my relationship with him. I get this overwhelming feeling that he left me here to do something. And so you know what I'm going to do? Something. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm doing tonight? Something. Because we are now in His kingdom.
kingdom because this is his kingdom. I'm not preaching to you. This isn't a special meeting. I'm just telling you what's going on in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. It's not my idea. And so it's caused my relationship to just be, every morning I wake up, I'm, I'm thinking, I should be dead a year and a half ago, but I'm alive. I've got to go back and thank him again, and I've got, to, I've got to find out what I need to do for him today. And you know what? He gives me instructions every day, what to do, where to go, and I just don't go do stuff. I wait until he tells me, and I go. Yeah. And it is, as these days are adding up, I found myself saying this one day. Thank you, Lord, for letting me live. Thank you for letting me work in your kingdom. Yes, and at the end of this day, I want you to be proud of me. Amen. Sure. I, I want to make you proud. Yes. Yeah. I want to love him like he has never been loved. Yeah. I want to serve him like he has never been served because he's worthy. Yes. Yes. I want to trust yes. him like he has never been trusted. Yes. Yes. Beyond what human beings can think about trust and all of this stuff. I just want him to be so happy. Yeah. That he let me live. Yeah. That I'm making a difference in his father's kingdom. Yes. Not in church. Not in religion. Not in ministry. But in his kingdom. Yes. I want to try to help you understand a little bit about what the kingdom looks like. Because my perspective's changed since he took me past death. And I don't want to live another life. I lived 70 years to myself, for myself, doing good things so I'll be saved in the end. But now I don't want to do that anymore. I want to make sure that I represent Him. I yeah. want to make sure that I do what He wants done. I want to make sure that I do it right. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I want to make sure that I help you. Come on. Because He really does want to help you. Yes. He didn't bring you here tonight to entertain you or to no. allow you to no. express yourself. No. He made a divine connection yeah. for you to be in here, yeah. put it in the mind of a preacher who's praying and saw your face. Yeah. And God has a message and a ministry for you tonight. Yes, yes. yes. Or you can listen to what he said. We're not doing it this way anymore. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, Brother Palmer, thank you for the kind words. I don't deserve the kind words because you really don't know who I am. But he does. Yes, That's right. Yes. When I was useless, he found me. Yes. And if there's ever been any good in the 70 plus years that I have lived, it definitely isn't because I earned it or I qualified for it. It's only been by the grace yes. and mercy. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And when I finish this, I still am nothing. Come on. So any praise of action and activity of my life does not go to me or my name. It goes to the one who called me and who trusted me and who continues to trust me to give me another day. And then he trusted me to come and interact with you tonight in this building. Because I want to help you get to where you can understand really what this is all about. The Bible tells us that many people have entertained angels unaware. You believe that? Yes, sir. There's examples in the Bible, but do you believe that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Well, if it's a fact, if you can actually entertain angels unaware, don't you think you can entertain them aware? Yeah. Come on. Don't you think you can actually know that they're here? Yes. Yes. I'm going to stretch it a little bit. Don't you actually think that you can call them by their name? Yeah. Come on. Gabriel, Michael. Lucifer, you know where this lies? It lies in acknowledgement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I hear all this stuff. I believe all this stuff. I understand what you're trying to say, but it means absolutely nothing unless you acknowledge that there are angels in this building. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That there are angels in your home. Yes. That there are angels that show up on your job. Yes. That there are angels keeping you from getting killed on your way home and on your way to church. Yes. That these people are robbing and killing and raping and 
on every bad thing in the world, but they missed your house. Yeah, they right. missed your trout, your, yeah. your avenue. They missed where it could have happened to you. What do you call this? Somebody is looking out for your welfare. Yeah. Because the Bible says we all have guardian angels. Yeah. And the altar yeah. has angels built around us because people have prayed for us. My mama's dead. She's in heaven. But her prayers still live in this boy's life. That's right. They still keep me safe because they go forward. That's right. Am I, am I getting through to you? There's something happening here that you can't see. There's something moving here that you can't put your fingers on. But if you'll just let your mind believe and trust God and His Word. Brother and Sister Palmer are. I adopted them whenever we kind of got connected. And I know his dad and his mom's here. I'm not taking anything away from you. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. Because this gift of God that we're enjoying was brought into this world because of you. Mm -hmm. And the beginning years, teach him principles that took him down the road by Pastor Elm and another man, including me, and back here again. I am not going to put this microphone down and walk out of this building until I tell you. So you'll understand who this man and who this woman really are. Come on, Mom. Now you can call him Jeff, you can call him Brenda, you can call him Bo, you can call him Dude, you can call him Pastor, <laughs> you can call him whatever you want to call him. That's all okay. That's the way we live, right? I'm going to tell you what I know. I am an eyewitness. I could not tell you all I know about these two people. But I want to challenge every single one of you, and I know there's relatives here, and that's why I'm doing this. I only pastored one church. I evangelized for a number of years, pastored the church, left there, and went to Africa. And the rest is history. You know the church I pastored was my home church. That's where I grew up. I was Johnny Boy. I did everything people do to go to church. You know, cut the grass, do all this stuff, drive the church bus, you know, blah, 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 this whole stuff. And so I come back, married with a child, after I had established ministry, and they voted me in to be their pastor. But 90% of them, in their mind, I was still Johnny Boy. The presbyter who installed me made this statement. I know he grew up here. I know half y'all related to him. And I know it's been Johnny to you, but he said it stopped right here. His name is Brother Garrison. He is your new pastor. And then he turns to me and says, Johnny, come take my picture. <laughs> 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 Why is this? Because we're not paying attention. We're caught up in this touchy-feely world. Some of you are not even in this building right now. Come on, brother. You would turn my spiritual and really look inside and say where you are. Some of you are starting to blush right now. We miss so much because we don't pay attention. I know that Brother Palmer's been here. Uh, he's worked around in Alabama for a number of years now. He did the remodeling on this church. He's been the guy around here. He has interaction with you because you work with him. He's related to some of you because you watched him and you grew up together with him. And uh, it's just the way it is. And it's hard for you to wrap your mind around this man's journey. That's right. He's not just a good preacher. He's not just a good Christian. He and his wife are awesome. Awesome, anointed people of God. Yes. I have watched them minister in such a depth. Yeah, he saw you before you got here. He saw this service before it ever came to pass. You know why? Because there is a prophetic anointing on this man's life. And if you're stupid enough for him to speak in your life, you say, oh, well. Then I'm going to say it again. You can't take stupid. Right. <laughs> 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 
Listen to me. Whenever he comes and says, hey, Bo, I'm praying. And, and God said to me, and I'm saying to you what God said to me. You better pay attention to what the man says. Because it's not the man, it's God's anointing that's on him as he occupies the office of a prophet. He's prophesied to a lot of people all over the world that you have never met and probably won't meet until you get to heaven if you make it there. God's used them. Sister Palmer is a seer. Most of us see black and white. She sees in full living color. We have been on missions assignments together. We were in Ireland. Look, we, we knew we had to go to Ireland. There's a battlefield there. The battle's got to be won. There's an altar that's there on one of those mountains. We don't have a clue where it is, but we just go over there on a plane, get off the plane, run a car, go to Ireland. We're driving down the road. We're trying to find this place. She saw the Spirit. He saw the Spirit. I'm responding to a prophetic voice that said, there's a mountain there, and on top of this mountain's an altar. We need to go tear it down. We need to pray on that mountain, and we need to lose the power of God on that mountain over this country. And so we're in pursuit of this. Why? Because the prophet and the seer gave me this information. I'm operating as a horizontal apostle for the kingdom, not for anything but the kingdom. So I'm responding to the voice of the prophet. We get there, and uh, we drove half the night. The morning's coming up, and we're kind of getting our bearing together, and we're driving and trying to look, and then Sister Palmer said, stop. It's over there. And so we kind of focused through the trees, and we saw where it was, and we found out that the road took us over there. We got into a place to park, and we parked, and we got out to go up there. This little girl, she ain't waiting on me. She's not waiting on her husband. She takes off me into a... There was kind of a path winding up where the animals have, you know, sheep on the side of the mountain. She forgot about that. She was like, she was hooked in on this thing, man, and she goes up there, and we're huffing and puffing trying to keep up with this little girl. <laughs> <laughs> and we get up to the top, and this is not just a small hill, it's a mountain. <laughs> and when we got up to the top of the thing, and it kind of crashed up to where it was level, on this end of that mountain was a high place, on this end of that mountain was a high place, and it was kind of like a saddle. And then she said, there it is! And we all looked. Didn't see anything. <laughs> Come on! She took us over there where the grass was up like this, and there was an altar wow. built, placed there. Remains of where sacrifice had been made on the top of that mountain. Off that mountain you could see across that valley. It was very strategically placed there. The occult, Satanism, all kinds of demonic things have taken place on top of that mountain. She has never been there in her life. She had no clue of where this mountain was. She just believed what God showed her and led us to the place. We jumped on that thing, tore that altar down, replaced it with stacking up stones like a cross. And then we stayed there and prayed and claimed that mountain. Spirit of God came down. Unbelievable things started to happen to that. Ireland is reaping a harvest today because that prophetess, that seer, saw this in the Spirit. This prophet said we're going to go. We went and it was accomplished. Right. Come on. Yes. Yeah. 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 Somebody hadn't been responsible. And so right. what's really going on? So what is really going on? For the sake of time, I'll stop. But I'm saying this to you. Jeff Palmer can operate in the prophetic as good as anybody that I work with. I work with a lot of prophets. I'm alive because of prophets. I'm coming out of Washington, D.C. on that big six-lane road. I'm minding my own business. My phone rang with the prophet. He said, Papa, change lanes. Get in the right lane. Get in the right lane quick. I'm I jump over in the right lane and here comes this semi out of control. It would have knocked me in the middle of next week. It blew by me and my car rocked. Yeah. Mm. Do you think I'm going to stop and question whether or not I believe in prophets? <laughs> <laughs> that was enough for me right there. How did he even know where I was? How did he even know? And he gave me the car. It's a white semi. And I saw a blur of white when it passed by. And he said, 
Bless you, Pop. Talk to you later. That was it. I'm on top of a mountain, no cell phone reception, zero. A preacher is crying. He says, Brother Garrison, you got to help me. I have a question. Would you please help me answer this? I haven't been able to find the answer. I said, what is it? He asked the question. My cell phone rings. There's no reception on the mountain. I open it up, and there's a text. And the text was the answer to this preacher's question. Mm. So I just took the phone and said, here's your answer. <laughs> Four states away. Different time zone. Using whatever cell carrier that they're supposed to be. Why well, wouldn't I believe in the prophetic? Right. This man's as good as any. Now, this is what's going to happen in the kingdom. I'm not interested in, sorry, Lot Road Pentecostal Church or your district or whatever religious situation you belong to. Oh, that's good. And I do my part in all that. But really, God's not going to use that method anymore. If you're going to drink with Him, you're going to drink in His kingdom. Yeah, right. Now you can go ahead and have church. Yeah. Ain't no more change. You can be one year from today. You can come back to this building, have the same songs, same, have no speaker, do what you want to do religiously. That don't change if that's what you want. Right. Right. But if you want to connect to the kingdom of God and be willing to let it take you where He wants you to go, not yeah. where you want to go. Yeah. And I want to add this to Jeff and Brenda Palmer. They go where God wants them to go. They do things that they can't explain. Sometimes you look at them and say, y'all are just absolutely out of your mind. Why would you do this? And the only reply is, God told me to. Uh -huh. And while you're trying to figure it out, he's got the satisfaction. I said yes. That's right. And how does it play out? It always plays out right. Do you know who this man is? This woman is? You know why God's brought them here to Alabama? You know why he's put them in this building? He's put them in this building to influence your life. He's put them in this building to speak prophetically into your life, to take you into the kingdom so you can enjoy the kingdom. I don't care how you live. I don't care what your hands are. I don't care if you're a reason why you're not doing more for God than you're doing. I'm here to tell you tonight that it's not about that. It's about the kingdom of God. Listen to him. Listen to him in his kingdom. He'll help you find your place. He'll change your life tonight. And you can live in his kingdom and be blessed in his kingdom. I don't know about you. I'm tired of this roller coaster jump. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired of shouting on the hill down and then get my teeth kicked out before Wednesday. Can I get a win from anybody? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want to have church tonight. Go try something else. It ain't going to work here. I don't know what the method that the enemy was trying to use to keep us out of here, but guess what? We're here. Amen. The lights are on. Yeah. And guess what? If the lights go off, we're still here. Amen. 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 You know why? Because it's His will. We're doing His will. Because it's over for you. We're obeying Him. This is His kingdom. Yes. Yes. I pray tonight that God will baptize your brain and get all of this religious nonsense out. And you have a relationship with God Almighty. And if you have a relationship, listen to me. You're not hearing this for the first time. Don't even act like you've never heard this before. If you pray, if you pray, God answers prayer. And you know what? He's saying the same thing to everybody. Yes, yes. Amen. Come on. Don't come here. Well, I never heard that before. You're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on. If you just try to pay attention, it will sink in eventually. Yeah, come on. You may be like me. I have to go around two or three times, but I'll get there eventually. That's right. Come on. Because I'm trying. And I can say this before God today. I'm doing my best. Come on. Come on, brother. And I'm not measuring my best by your appraisal of me. According to the Georgian calendar, one more day and we pass into 2017. Yes. But I, I doubt very seriously that most of you even know what took place last year. According to the Jewish calendar, 
This is the year 5777. <coughs> we are two months short, two months of 5777. October the 1st was the Jewish New Year. How many of you celebrated it? How many of you acknowledged it? How many of you even pay attention? And I can hear your brain working around and well, what's the big deal? What's it got to do with me? Yeah, I'm not living in Jerusalem. I'm going to say something else to you. You're not living in the kingdom of Ouch. It's not Jewish stuff. This is how God operates his business. Did you know that last year, 5776, was the year of Jubilee? Did you cash in on the year of Jubilee? You know why backsliders are coming back? Because it was Jubilee last year. That's what he said would happen. That when the end slavery would end. You know how many miracles of finance have happened to God's people last year? You know how many preachers called me and said, the strangest things has happened. Somebody came in and paid my church off. A personal friend of mine, a preacher, I call him Superman. You know why I call him Superman? Because he just keeps getting dumped on. If anything's bad going to happen to a preacher and his family and his church, it happens to him. Now he's accountable. I'm his accountability partner. He calls his brother Freddy. Uh, you know, Grandma just got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I feel just that stupid because what he's asking me to do, there is no answer for it. And so I'm trying to be a nice guy and hear him and be sympathetic toward him. And you know, ask for, sometimes I have an answer for him, sometimes I don't. Do you know what he says at the end of this? Well, all I know is it's real and it's happening to me. Right. So all I can do is give it back to God. Yeah. Yeah. Where have I ever heard that before? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, brothers. And so this has just been a long, long bad time. His dad was an alcoholic. His dad was wicked me. His dad owned the family business. He'd been working for him since he was 16 years old. And he's a monopolizer. He's crazy. The man's insane. Got a nasty mouth. You can't be around him. He'll fire you and kick you out of his boot. He's just a wicked, wicked man. And his son's a preacher. And his, his wife is a saint in the church. Still a godly lady. And they're living with this imbecile. And trying to deal with this. And we try to reach for him. Trying to help him. No way. His daughter... Raised in church as a young teenager, outstanding, impacted my life, impacted a lot of people's life. Ended up with a bad marriage, went south, ended up dying, an alcoholic, mm -hmm. with cancer. But before she died, and on and on and on we can go, I'll stop right there. Two major problems. First week of Jubilee. I'm going to visit them. His dad's on his deathbed. He's cussing out everybody, including the hospice nurse. And he comes home from work. Son comes home from work, chill on his mom, chill on his dad. And she's got to cuss him all day. And so he said, God, I'm tired of hearing this. Shut the man's mouth. Before he could take another breath, he couldn't say another word. He lived weeks, could not communicate, couldn't cuss if he wanted to. One week into the Jubilee, the hospice nurse says, we want to see you dead alive, and you come see him today because he won't see you tomorrow. This preacher goes into the room. His dad's laying there and he can't communicate. He's looking in his eyes. And he said, Dad, can you hear me? Blink your eyes. He blinked his eyes. He said, it's over. The nurse says you won't live to see tomorrow. Dad, I don't want you to go to hell. But if you don't repent and let God fill you with the Holy Ghost, tomorrow you'll be burning in hell. And he said, I stood there and looked at that, and I know my dad could hear me, and all he could do was blink his eyes. He said, I crawled up on the bed. He said, I laid down on my dad, and he got right in his ear. And he got his hand, 
He said, Daddy, if you can hear me, squeeze my hand. He felt that squeeze. He said, I know you can't talk, but he said, I'm going to repent on your behalf. Mm -hmm. I'm going to intercede for you. I'm going to be you. And this preacher started to confess him, drunkenness and wickedness, laying on top of his dad, repeating incidents that he saw as a child growing up and what he did to his family and did to his mother and did... And he just went over and over. And there were sobs that he felt from the heaving chest of his dying dad. And that man repented for his dad and God filled him with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. on his deathbed. Mm -hmm. Because of Jubilee. Because of a promise. Mm -hmm. That the bonds, chains of sin will be broken. His daughter, before she died, an alcoholic, with on cancer. Called my house and said, Me, Papa Lolo, pray for me. I gotta get right with God. And we prayed and we prayed. And she was praying. Her mom and dad was praying. And so I hung the phone up and let them have their privacy pray. In about five minutes, the dad called back and said, Listen to this. God is filled with the Holy Ghost. And she died with a smile on her face in the world. How close. They both came to going to hell. Well, what saved them? The year of Jubilee. God released a promise for that whole year. All the things that were done in the year of Jubilee was because God released that promise. Come on. Well, you said, well, I did not feel well Jubilee. That's okay. There's grace. Talk yeah. to me later. I'll let you know what you can miss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if that happened in Jubilee, what, what about 57, 77? What's going on? I'm going to tell you what's going on. Election day, where were you? Both North, probably. You know where I was? I went to New York. I went to the United Nations building. Across the street is All Nations Chapel. In the United Nations building, there's a room called the meeting room. A demon-possessed man who was an ambassador built that room and patterned it after a satanic occult mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. The position, the lighting, everything. There's a big, huge stone this wide in that room. They say it fell out of heaven. And people from all over the world go into that room when they come to the United Nations meeting and they go in that room and they meditate. Mm -hmm. Two apostolic preachers, Art Wilson being one, went into that room to pray. When they went into that room, there were people laying all over the floor, chanting in demonic presence. He said it was so scary and so terrible, he said we didn't even stay. We left. But I told him that day, I said, we're going back today. He said, well, Brother Garrison, you need to know what's in that room. I said, no, no, excuse me. You need to know what's in that room. <laughs> He said, I don't know what's in that room. <laughs> he said, I'll be honest with you, I really ain't looking forward to taking you in there. But because I have to pass and can get in, I have to go in with you. So I had a prophet with me. The prophet, Lee Carl said, I'll go with you. Don't be afraid. I told him, I said, that demon that was on that altar? I said, a week ago, God spoke to me and the angel of North America came to my house. And we had a conversation. He said, I want you to go to the United Nations building, go in that meeting room at that altar and pray over that altar because that's where I need to be. Yeah. Come on. Did I believe that? Enough to buy a plane ticket. Enough to go there. Enough to get a pass to get in the building. Enough to ask the man to take me to that room. And when we walked into that room, this is what Art Wilson said. My God. Wow! 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 The presence of God was so thick in that room. He hit our knees. We anointed that altar. Power of God was in that room. Power of God is still in that room. Amen. Listen to me. That throne of Satan is dethroned. He is cast out of that building. Angel of God stays in that room. We entertain angels aware. I'm just telling you. How it really is. Maybe you don't have a clue. I'm telling you how it really is. 
Tonight, if you would go to the United Nations building and walk in that room, you will feel exactly what I said that was felt when there were women in there that day. Yes. We left there and went across the The climate in the whole building changed. Totally changed. Across the street, United Nations Chapel, they let this man have church there. I think it's one hour a month. And you unlock the door for him. And then they run him out before his hour's up. He said, that's the protocol. I said, we're going over there. There's another offer we need to pray over. He said, I don't have permission. I said, do you, do you understand what I just said? What just happened in the United Nations building controls this whole atmosphere. I said, we're going over there and pray. He said, well, we'll go. Did you believe we went across the street? <clears throat> Walked up, opened the door. The guard is standing there. And the guard just allowed us to walk in. Doors unlocked. Went in there and stayed for two Talking in tongues. Praying for people. And then God told this prophet that he needed to go to that altar and pour oil on that altar mm -hmm. that something significant was going to happen. This was at 5 o'clock on election day eve. I took pictures of them praying and anointing that altar. I watched that prophet fall on his face. I'm watching the glory of God move in that place. He finally got up on his hands and knees. Another preacher that was traveling with us works at the Pentagon. He's a high-ranking officer that's in charge of arms and weaponry. And he was there. On his phone, he was monitoring the election, electoral votes. He got up on his hands and knees, and he stood up, and he made this statement. What time is it? And the preacher looked at his clock. There's watch, phone. It was 11 minutes after 7. Then the prophet said, this election is turning right now. And Donald Trump is going to be our next president. And the officer from the Pentagon looked at that and said, God better hurry up because he ain't no more near winning. We tracked it. From 11 minutes after 7, that thing started mounting up. And when we went to bed that night, he was the president of the United States. What's that got to do with anything? Let me tell you what happened next morning. We spent the night together in uh, evangelist quarters of the church. I'm up praying, drinking coffee, and this officer comes down and he sits down and he starts crying. He spoke to us and said, you don't, you don't know. You don't know what just happened. He said, I work at the Pentagon. He said, I'm actually retired. And they chose me, the generals chose me to go there because I'm the person that knows more about arms and weapons in all of the military in the United States. I am the point man for that. And they want me after my retirement just to go there as an advisor. He said, the stuff that we hear every day will blow your mind. He started crying. He said, we just deliberated on this. He said, this is a fact. With everything that's already set in place in America, all the stuff that's already in action. He said, if Hillary Clinton was elected president, the day of the inauguration, he said, Within 30 days, the United States will be under martial law. He said, that is what we are talking about in the Pentagon. You need to really listen right now. You need to not just let this buzz over your head. Had she won the 20th of January, 30 days in advance, we would be under martial law. You know what that is? You don't own your property. You don't have a choice. You don't have a right. The United Nations are already here. They have all their armament here. They've got all the FEMA camps set up. They've got everything in place. If the button was pushed tonight, they would be on the streets. The police department would be in control. Our Army and Navy and Air Force, Marines would not be in control. We would be controlled by the United Nations. Yes. And if they told you you don't, you will not or they will kill you. Right. 30 days. That's how close we, in this God-fearing America, we have come to total destruction. 
God saved us. Amen. God saved us. Yes. Come on. Yeah. 
A woman that's a thief and involved in all kinds of stuff, guilty of sin, and she's still allowed to run and still allowed to occupy votes, and we would have voted her in and she would have destroyed our country. That's how far down the drain we have gone. Does anybody want to try to fix this? Right. We have seven years to do it. We have a new day to do it, but we can't do it unless we get in the mindset of the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Listen to the prophet's voice. Listen to the direction of the government. The government's governed by apostles and prophets. I went to Nigeria as a missionary. I went there with 10,000 apostolic believers. Missionaries were before me. 10,000. Jesus' name, tongue talking, Holy Ghost filled, apostolic. I went in there to save the nation. I was commissioned to be an apostle to that nation. I went in there two years. I didn't even hardly know who they were. It took me a couple terms to even get where I could halfway understand. I knew I was outnumbered and outwitted. Only thing I could do <coughs> yes. and when I went in, you know what I said to him? If you pray about it, I'll give the instructions and I'll do it. He said to me, first, the prince of this nation has to be broken, and this is what the prince is. And he said, you can break it in three days and three nights, but you'll follow me. I called my wife and kids into the room. I said, I don't know what's going to happen in the next three days, but I'm going to break the back of the prince of this nation. God called me to be an apostle here. I'm going to stand up and be an apostle in this nation. I immediately started running fever. I was sick, delirious, out of my mind. My wife had to change my clothes. I sweated until I soaked the bed. I shook until I almost shook the bed frame off. And I was just totally delirious for three days and three nights. But just as quick as that came on me, it left and God said, you have defeated the prince of this nation. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, what's going to happen now? I got to looking around and everything looked the same. <laughs> same bunch of preachers. Over half a preacher couldn't even speak English. Didn't even have more than third grade education. And I'm going to take a nation? And so we started a Bible school and they gave us all the dumb kids in the village. And we defeated the prince of the nation? What am I going to believe? I'm not going to believe what I'm seeing. I'm not even going to believe what I'm hearing. I'm not even going to believe what's in my world right now. But I am going to believe what he said. Yes. And I said, this is what we're going to do. Everybody's going to pray. We're going to start Bible school. It ain't about classes. It ain't about teaching. It's about praying. And so we had a prayer change that went around the clock. We took turns. We prayed day and night and day and night. Things started breaking. We started seeing some growth. Started seeing some movement. And I'm thinking, well, God, this thing's going to take me my lifetime to see 130 million, 130 million people come to the knowledge of who you are. And he said, you take care of what you're doing. I'm doing something that you don't see. Yeah, sure. Just keep doing what I tell you to do. And we kept praying. And we kept praying. And all of a sudden I heard news that the Holy Ghost found <coughs> in one of the largest Catholic churches in the country. They went in for morning mass. Holy Ghost fell on them. They're spilling out in the streets drunk like the day of Pentecost. Nice. At that time, the Church of God, Assembly of God, all your major denominations were living in one town up in the north. And that was religious control of that country. Plus some European... And us. And then start, God started pouring the Holy Ghost out on people in schools and the marketplace, and it started. Today, the largest Christian gathering anywhere on planet Earth is when the Nigerians gather together for conference. Three million attendants. Three million Holy Ghost filled tongue-talking people. Yeah. Wow. They're taking their nation. God turned that oil money that was going to the Arabs and put in their pockets. And now those pastors are pastoring church. One pastor in Lagos pastors a church of 50,000 people every Sunday. In a building that would fit in any city in North America. Beautiful, gorgeous sound system, backlights, video, the whole nine yards, everything. The pastor's on kind of a spinning table. He, he preaches his message going around like that. As far as you can see, people. As far as you can see, his people. 
far as you to see as people. We don't do church like that. You would if you had 50,000 people yeah. in a building in Africa, yeah. and it goes on and on and on. They're not riding bicycles. They're not walking in bush and flip-flops. They're driving Learjets, and they're pastoring churches all over the world. They just bought hundreds of acres in Dallas, Texas. They have the largest church in London, England. They're everywhere. <laughs> the largest Christian gathering, check this out. Because a lady saw a mountain and saw an idol and went there and prayed and broke the back of it. The largest Christian gathering in Ireland today is when the apostolics from Nigeria get together to have church. So don't look at me like you think I don't know what I'm talking about. i got a whole bunch of t-shirts that have been there and done that. I'm just sharing with you. I'm an old man. I'm going to borrow time. I'm just trying to help you realize that right now is the kingdom of God. We're going to go into prayer in just a minute. You want some music or not? I'm going to give you some instructions. I know some of you are <coughs> no slash. You've been gone. You're still standing there, but you're gone. But there are some people here tonight that really are serious about facing brand new and getting rid of all the junk, dragging you down and beating you down. here and say, well, it's good to be there. Or you can stand right here for the next few minutes and let this man of God lay hands on you and speak into your life what God said. And I'll guarantee you that you're 57, 77, or 2017, which you're going to get into you.
you're going to find yourself a place where you can let God tell you what you need to do and what you need to do going forward. Going forward. You need to be just like him. Do your best. That's all.
in that area in your heart that there's a blockage, and I want to say the third artery from the right hand side, there's a blockage there, and God wants to touch that right now to bring healing to your body. And that fear that comes with that needs to go in the name of Jesus. Would you lift your hands? I want to pray with you. Come on, good Would you stretch your hands back here and pray for Brother Davis right now? Right now, Jesus.
I review what I see. Because it don't line up with him. I don't receive what I look at you. I receive what I heard from the Lord. I receive what I heard from the Lord. Would you lift your hands one more time? Come on, let's call to the last time tonight. Jesus. We receive. We receive what we heard from you tonight, oh God. We want to be a part of this kingdom. We want to be a part of your work in the earth, oh God. I want to be a voice. I want to be hands. I want to be feet. I want to be the word of encouragement that somebody needs. I want to have the healing in my hands that they need. I want to put sin into a position. I want to be the position for your sake, oh God. That you will receive glory. That you will receive honor. I receive it of you, Lord. I receive the anointing. Jesus in a manger. 
Right. They had to be out in somebody's stable near the woods somewhere. Uh, what good come of out of Nazareth? I used to, I, I, when I heard the name Chun Chu, when God brought me out of Nazareth, I said, Lord, what good come of out of Chun Chu? <laughs> People ask the Lord, where is Chun Chu? You know what the Lord told me before we started this thing? He said, I'm going to put Chun Chu on the map. All right. All right. God is going to do that. Not God is going to be obedient. That's right. But he said he was going to, people were going to know about Chun Chu and didn't even know it existed. I was the first. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up here and didn't know it existed. I didn't know the woods. What are you talking about, God? Who knows why he picks the geographical locations that he does, but he do. That's right. He do. So I'm glad you came. And I, I feel as though the Lord ministered to some of you very deeply. Thank you, Jesus. And it's going to hold in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want to pray over you one last time, and uh, then we're going to dismiss and the Lord go home with you. Amen. 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 And we can fellowship a little bit. Lord Jesus, we love you tonight. Thank we you, thank you, Father, for what you've given us. We thank you for the words of the Apostle oh, the Lord. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the operation of the prophetic ministry, oh God. We thank you for the power of your prayer, Lord. I thank you for what you're beginning to do in all of us, Jesus. I pray, Lord oh God, that you would walk with your people, strengthen them and accomplish every word that you spoke to them tonight. Help us to grow in more and more knowledge of you. Help us to grow more and more in spirit, Lord. Help us to exercise your name and your spirit, oh God, that you would receive all glory and honor and praise. We thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you for the way you minister. Worship you tonight. Don't let this leave, Lord. Don't let the enemy sift away what you have given us, Lord. I rebuke the adversary before he can even begin in the name of Jesus. That you walk with your people and get them home safely. Get them back the next time, God. That your perfect will be accomplished in their life, oh Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we ask you to bless the food that has been labored over and brought here tonight. Bless you bless the person in our bodies. Bless those hands that prepared it. I thank you for the fellowship and the people that you brought together tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yes. 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 Yes.